I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, fish cleaning behavior because this is a really important relationship. As I said, all the places, or the majority of places where you go to dive with mantas um, are cleaning stations. So you're probably wondering, what the hell is a cleaning station? Um, we can clean ourselves. You're probably aware of other mammals cleaning each other. For instance, um, you know, the apes, um, you know, chimpanzees groom each other. Quite a lot of animals, especially mammals, do clean or clean each other as, as part of their social regime. And, and reef fish clean a great deal. In fact, all reef fish clean to some um, extent or other. Um, and it's been you know, observed and evaluated and investigated since the 1960s. So here we've got a picture on the top of a, a sweet lips. Um, for those of you in the reef club, um, hopefully you'll be able to recognize some of the species of fish here. And, you, and hopefully you'll be aware of these, this symbiotic relationship. So we have um, a, a cleaner wrasse uh, cleaning the oral area of this uh, uh, sweet lip. And we also have crustaceans, uh, so small shrimps and crabs, which also perform cleaning activity. Um, these don't usually clean mantas, although they have been known to do so in, in certain areas. And here we've got a picture of two morrows sharing a hole. Um, and there are, uh, there's a cleaner fish, and there's also a couple of shrimps um, actually cleaning the, the moray. And many fish spend, uh, no, all, all, sorry, start again, all fish clean pretty much every day. And they spend a considerable amount of time um, being clean. So even little tiny fish. So here we have a Maldives and enemy fish. And again, we have a cleaner fish um, busy cleaning. So this, this little cleaner fish will probably work its way around this entire colony of um, an enemy fish several times because each fish likes to be cleaned so many times. And what they're cleaning is dead skin, um, mucus, parasites. Um, they clean the, 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 the skin of the animal inside the gills, into the oral cavity. Um, and fish are cleaned many times a day. They actually followed a single cleaner ass uh, for several hours. And it went back and cleaned the same fish 20, 30 times during that period. So fish do a lot of cleaning. Okay, hopefully that's news to many people in the auditorium. Because I didn't really appreciate how important the relationship was. So... These cleaner fish live in what we call a cleaning station. So this is an aggregation of cleaner fish. Sometimes it's just a couple of fish, and in some species it's a whole colony of 100, 200 uh, fish all living together. Uh, what I've got here is a, a, a photograph of a, a parietes coral. And although there's lots of antheas, these are the little orange fish, um, amongst the antheas there are many of these little black and white stripy fish. These are cleaner fish. And this is a very typical cleaning station. So we have a big, uh, a massive of, of coral, and the cleaner fish are advertising their services by hanging above the coral block and sort of swimming in the water column so that other fish can come in and be attended to. Um, in some sites, uh, rather than being on a fixed block, as in this particular case, there's just a reef flat, uh, and the, the, the whole reef may be swarming with thousands and thousands of cleaner fish. Um, the South Arry area where whale sharks are seen on a regular basis, pretty much the entire reef flat, the plateau, is just covered uh, in these black and white cleaner fish. Okay. This is a very important relationship. Areas where they, where, which are devoid of cleaner fish, where there are no cleaner fish, the, the fish that live there, the reef fish that live there, get sick quite quickly. Um, and usually the fish move on because they need to be cleaned. It's, a, it's, it's the same as us to a certain extent. If we don't look after ourselves, if we don't bathe and stay clean, we will start to pick up diseases and so forth. It's exactly the same for cleaner fish, um, for, for fish, reef fish. And it's important that you understand that all fish clean. So from the smallest fish right the way up to the largest, you know, the whale sharks and uh, the manta rays. With the manta rays, uh, they can swim in to a cleaning station. So they find an area where there are cleaners and they visit the cleaning station and then swim away and get on with their business. And this is the case for other large animals which visit cleaning stations. Um, there are different fish involved in the relationship in different parts of the world. So uh, this is a photograph from the south of the Maldives and uh, there's a mixture. This is a very big um, parietes block, lots of different species of cleaners. 
Um, and this is a photograph of a hammerhead taken from the East Pacific. And for those of you, again, who can recognize your, your general um, um, genus of fish, we have a, a, an angelfish and we have lots of butterfly fish, uh, which are attempting to clean this hammerhead shark. Um, different fish can be involved. For instance, groupers, uh, large mackerels like uh, rainbow runners. Uh, so it's not just small fish that clean. In different places, different species clean. Anything from a very small fish to a very large fish can actually be doing the cleaning as well as be cleaned. Uh, I'm going to talk through the most important cleaner fish in the Maldives. Um, and so therefore, you can uh, recognize them either in the photographs or you know, later on, or maybe when you're looking through books, or if you're lucky enough to go diving or snorkeling, that it'll help you recognize them. So I mentioned already... We have this small black and white cleaner fish, which is called a blunt-haired wrasse, um, Thalassoma amblocephalum, um, which, as a juvenile female, uh, looks like this. So it's a small black and white stripy fish, this big, and then turns into an adult, not much larger. So it's, it's a relatively small fish and very easily overlooked. And these make colonies of hundreds and hundreds of cleaner fish. Then there's the famous uh, blue and black uh, blue streak cleaner wrasse, uh, you might have seen these from photographs. Again, a very, very important cleaner. Often in pairs, usually only in small groups. So we're looking at maybe a single one, a pair, two pairs, something like that. And they usually have a permanent area on the reef. And they, they live on that part of the reef. And the other fish that live in the area, the reef fish that want to be cleaned, know to come and visit where the, the Blue Street cleaner wrasse live. Um, if you visit any reef, you'll find many of those uh, in their cleaning stations uh, spotted along the reef. And then there's the bicolour wrasse. The, the, one, the picture on the left is the juvenile, and this is the adult. Again, the juvenile, as you can see, it's, kind of, it's quite small. It's black and white stripes, very similar to the other species. And again, this is a very important one because it seems to take on a different kind of cleaning role compared with the other species. The others are more general. This one seems to do the hard, um, into the gills, removing parasites, um, from my observations. Um, the large ones will be commonly seen cleaning large uh, uh, jacks, giant trevally um, sharks as well. So they seem to perform a specific role. And then another very common uh, cleaner is the moon wrasse. Um, we have a juvenile. Uh, this is the juvenile, it's just highly blown up. Again, quite small usually, they make large schools, so you'll find them 20, 30, 50, 100 at a time. And then when they're adults, they tend to be more independent, maybe in small schools, two, four, six at a time. Um, and it's again, a very, very important cleaner in, in the Maldives and not really reported elsewhere. So we seem to have specific cleaner fish in the Maldives compared with other places, you know, from the Indian Ocean, um, Pacific and the Caribbean. Interesting. We also have false cleaners, um, which, as you can tell, pretend to be a cleaner because they have the same appearance as small and stripy, but these actually infest cleaning stations, um, pretending to be a cleaner, and actually uh, jump up, grab a piece of skin out of the animal that's come to the cleaning station and actually bite them. Um, and it actually hurts. And, and the problem with having too many false cleaners on a cleaning station is it actually stops the, the, the fish that want to be cleaned visiting because they know they're going to get bitten, so they don't come anymore. And we believe that the cleaning station at Sunlight, uh, which is in North Mali, um, just inside uh, Paradise, actually, um, was probably infested with these in the early 2000s, and it actually prevented the, more, uh, the mantis from coming in to visit because there were too many of these uh, false cleaner fish. Counting cleaners to, to evaluate them is quite hard work. So they move around. So on the, when you're observing them in a video or actually in the wild, uh, they move around very fast. So how we normally process them is by identifying the species from a photograph and then putting a little dot on them. So if you have any photographs, um, you can process them in a similar manner. Just find the photograph and try and identify your species, put a coloured dot on it, and then you can count the dots. And uh, as I said, up, as I've written here, uh, up to 111 different, um, it was actually blunted wrasse were found on one manta. Now, some places there will be 20 or 30 mantas all being cleaned at the same time. So when you multiply up maybe 100 cleaners per manta, we are talking literally thousands of cleaner fish 
on a single reef at once, all cleaning at the same time. Um, these are you know, large numbers of animals, they're very important. There are different types of cleaning station, and this is another thing which uh, perhaps needs to be evaluated in a bit more depth. But I'll just go describe what it's like, and then give, there's some examples on the right-hand column. So a single bommy. Um, this is just one big coral block, and it's usually the cleaners live in the top of the coral block, a little bit like that photograph I showed. Um, and these usually are in very obvious places. So they'll be uh, on the outside reef, uh, somewhere where fish will come in from the ocean, uh, and very visual, so that uh, as, as a diver, human, if you went snorkeling on that, along that reef, you would see this coral block and say, oh, that stands out, and, and you're attracted to it. And it's very probable that that is the advert for the, the cleaning station. Okay. Um, otherwise, how do these animals find these cleaning stations? How do they know where to go? Um, and then, again, lagoon blocks. So these are isolated coral blocks, again, usually parietes, um, big um, massives, as it were. Um, but these are sitting in a, or, you know, in a lagoon with a white sand bottom with big coral blocks separated. And these are usually inside the atoll, in, in lagoons, you know, usually quite close to the ocean, but you know, within the atoll. And then we get the outer reef flat type areas, which, as I said, this, this is the reef flat, the plateau before the drop off facing the ocean. Um, so, as I said, the whole of the South Arry uh, reef is, is, is of this description. Um, we have you know, Madivaru, which is the very famous site in South Arry. Um, yeah, many, many, many sites are like this. And in these areas, it's, it's a very vague cleaning station. You, you can't go and look and say, oh, it's this particular coral block. It, the cleaner fish are literally distributed over hundreds of metres, if not you know, kilometres of reef sometimes. And it's, it's hard to know exactly where to go to look for the fish being cleaned. And then at other sites, it's just an area of a tealer. And it seems to vary from one visit to the next as to where the actual cleaning is going on. And again, this is very hard uh, when you want to evaluate a site to know where to go. So uh, this is a, a patch of a reef with no obvious visual reference. You know, it's nothing that stands out, um, which the cleaner, the, the, the cleaner fish are congregated and the manta rays or the other fish will come and visit. Uh, just to give you an example, this is a, just a, a diagram of uh, Lankan. Uh, so this is one big coral block. Um, the, the, the shallowest part of the reef here, where the, the main coral block is, um, is around um, 12, 14 metres. And the top of the reef drops off gently over towards the ocean, um, going down to about 22 metres. Then there's like a sandy bottom and you know, out towards the ocean in this direction, as it were, where it gets deeper and deeper. And what happens is the manta rays swim in um, from the ocean, either direct from the ocean or from the north and south, um, and visit areas on this reef where there are aggregations of cleaner fish. Over the years, for whatever reason, this part, which I call area one, is always the preferred area. Why? I don't know. But they, that's the place they always go. I know that if I'm going to take photographs, I always position myself next to area one because I know I'm going to get the nicest photographs. Um, it's like they know and I know. And that may be it, that they, they know because they've been there before and they've seen it. And it's a, a little bit like we may have a favorite hairdresser uh, or you know, we, we have someone that... Uh, you know, does our nails, does it in a particular way, you know, a manicurist, and we like that manicurist, so we go back to that manicurist rather than a different one. I don't know, but, the, you know, there, have, there has been some research which shows that the clients, the, the fish that wish to be cleaned, um, do choose the best cleaners. And so it's very possible that for whatever reason, the best cleaners are found on area one. Now, seeing as these are very small fish which probably only last a couple of years and divers have been visiting Lankan for, you know, 40 years plus now, I, I can't see that it's, it, that can really work. But maybe it, it just attracts the majority or the best cleaners still go there or they go there in large numbers. Anyway, um, it, there, there is a relationship between the effectiveness of the cleaners, apparently, and, uh, and the um, attraction to the at the clients, the fish which visit.